Go in the description, subscribe to the New Testament Review Podcast with Ian Mills and Laura Robinson. Ian Mills with New Testament Podcast Review. I have a question about the diatessaron, Tatian's diatessaron. What, educate me on this. It seems someone's trying to create a single, solidified, proper gospel. <laughs> well, I think everyone is trying to create a single proper solidified gospel. And I think you see this uh, if you go read the prologue to Luke's gospel. Um, he says many have attempted, and this word attempted is a criticism. This is a word that Luke himself uses as a criticism of other people, and we see this is how it's read by the early church. Um, so the early church has to say that Luke is talking about heretics writing other gospels. Um, but there's good reason to think Luke is in fact talking about Mark for sure, um, and probably either Mark and Q or Mark and Matthew. Um, uh, other people have attempted to write the story, but I, the author of Luke's gospel, am going to put this in the good and proper order. I'm going to, I'm going to write this stuff down accurately and in the correct order. Um, and then we see Marcion doing the same thing, right? Marcion comes along and uh, he rewrites Luke and this becomes his one gospel. We've got the gospel of the Hebrews, which is another gospel that Irenaeus says the people who used this text used only this text. And it seems to be harmonizing the synoptics. It seems to be some sort of combination of the synoptics, but harmonizing isn't a qualitatively different exercise than what, Marcin, or than what uh, Luke is doing, right? Luke is taking Mark and Q or Mark and Matthew and Creating a new God, creating a new gospel with them, right? He is himself harmonizing. So I prefer in my writing on this um, uh, synthesizing. I think synthesizing is a better description of what Luke is up to and what Tatian is up to as well. So I think Tatian, um, we don't unfortunately have any comments from Tatian about his own work. But what we do find is that Tatian wrote another gospel. And his gospel seems to be a combination of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He's using the four canonical gospels as his sources. Um, he doesn't preserve everything from them. He cuts out the genealogies. Um, he seems to cut out other smaller things. Uh, and then in weaving these things together, he puts them in a brand new chronology. He doesn't adopt Matthew's chronology or Mark's or Luke's. Um, he creates a new chronology in which the temple is right at the middle of Jesus's ministry. So John puts it at the beginning, the synoptics put it at the end. Tatian has a new setting for this. Um, and in doing this, he seems to have introduced new readings, uh, new interesting tidbits. Um, he is writing another gospel. And the interesting thing about Tatian is Tatian's diatessaron, and this is a word that probably he didn't have for it. He probably just called it the gospel. But diatessaron means through the four. Um, and we probably have Eusebius applying this term to Tatian's gospel as a way of describing what this is. This is the, the through the four gospel. This is the by means of the four gospel. Um, and Tatian's gospel was used as the primary, and in lots of cases it seemed, the sole liturgical gospel in Roman Syria and Sassanid Persia for as many as 400 years. Um, we have uh, Theodore of Syr writing in the 5th century saying he went and collected copies of Tatian's Diatessaron that were being used as the sole gospel in 200 churches. He goes around to these churches that are using, he says, they didn't know any better, and they were using this as their sole gospel. This is the only text they had. Um, Ephraim, Ephraim, one of these major proto-Orthodox church figures um, in Syria, writes a commentary on the gospel, and it's just, for him, the gospel. And this is Tatian's gospel. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, doctrine of Adai, which is this narrative about how Christianity first came to Syria. The doctrine of Adai said that the, the apostles of Adai, and Adai is, how, is the name Thaddeus, one of Jesus' disciples. So the followers of Jesus' disciples, they devoted their time to reading the Jewish scriptures and the new, which is Tatian's Diatessaron. Um, so it represents early Syriac Christianity as reading, using the Diatessaron as their gospel. Um, one more example is we have Rabula 
another another proto orthodox church father um, who writes out this rule that people have to have in their churches the separated gospels, and that becomes the way that Syriac Christians refer to the four canonical gospels that we are familiar with. They call them the separated gospels, and that reflects a at least a possibility that the United Gospel, that is, that term only makes sense relative to something that occasions the Tesseron, something that combines all of them together. Um, and so we see those that text disappears over time. Um, unfortunately, today, we don't have a single copy of Tatian's Dia Tesseron that survives. Um, there's something called the Dura Europus fragment, and this is the first article I ever published, um, that some people have argued uh, belongs to Tatian's Dia Tesseron. It's a fragment of 15 lines, almost entirely composed of the description of Joseph of Arimathea, um, and it harmonizes the canonical Gospels. And people immediately, as soon as they found this, said this must be Tatian's Dia Tesseron. It's in Dura Europa, which is in Syria. It's early. Um, this is probably Tatian's Gospel we found. The problem, I've argued, um, in a piece published in uh, the Gospel of Tatian, I think is the book is called, um, published by TNT Clark, I argue that the Dura Europa fragment, there's only one place where we can compare that to um, Ephraim's commentary on the Dia Tesseron. Uh, Ephraim, Ephraim wrote this extended commentary on Tatian's Gospel, um, and there's only one piece of evidence from one place where we can compare that with Ephraim's comments, um, the order of some stories. And in the only place where we can test uh, the Dura Europa fragment against our best, earliest, and most reliable source for Tatian's Gospel, they have different orders. Mm. And so the Dura Europa fragment is probably just another example of someone doing what the Synoptic Gospels are up to. It's probably somebody else writing another Gospel, combining the sources available to them. Tatian and this other fragment are doing the same thing. Um, Heck, it could be the Gospel of the Hebrews, although that doesn't seem likely because there's Johannine elements in there. Um, but we do know there were other people who were doing this, doing the same thing, who were taking written sources and writing new Gospels. And a lot of them didn't become wildfire, so to nope. speak. So this is fascinating. I love this. Where in in, in the Syriac church, is it Syriac or yep. Syriac? Uh, same thing, I think. Um, in that church that's using the diatessaron, if I'm saying this wrong, please nope, all correct good. my pronunciation. Um, did they have Pauline letters? It's, they did. They did. They had a corpus of 14 Pauline letters that for them was part of the New Testament. So they had the 13 we're familiar with, and they had 3rd Corinthians. And Ephraim, the same person who wrote the commentary in the Dita Hesron, mainstream proto-Orthodox church father, tells us that only the heretics reject 3rd Corinthians because 3rd Corinthians um, criticizes their heresy. So he's talking about the Bardaisonites and Bardaisan, the movement associated with Bardaisan, who is one of our early named, possibly the earliest named historical figure from Syriac Christianity. Um, I'm going to think about that for a second, uh, but probably the, the very oldest person who we have anything resembling like writings and teachings from. Uh, we have uh, a work that's associated with his school that survives. Um, but Ephraim is polemicizing against he, that view, which early Christians who discuss him seem to take Bardaisan and his school as more or less normal good Christians, but later gets rejected as heretical um, because they were very interested in astrology of all things. Um, uh, that view, um, Ephraim says 3rd Corinthians denounces. Um, and some people even argue that 3rd Corinthians may have been a composition written against Bardaisanite Christianity. That doesn't seem to be the case. It does seem to be written against some sort of doceticism. Um, and that's a complicated conversa conversation. Um, but we have copies of 3rd Corinthians that survive. Um, and between Ephraim and Afrahat, this other figure, early uh, Syriac Christian figure, um, we know that 3rd Corinthians was viewed as a authentically Pauline epistle that was used by mainstream Christians, um, used by all kinds of Christians, except apparently not by the heretics, um, in Syriac Christianity. So you actually mentioned earlier um, that you don't really prefer the term harmonizing, but synchronizing, correct? Yeah, synthesizing. Synthesizing, sorry. No. And so I think that's important because when I'm thinking, it, it just follow my thought here, and I'd love to hear your opinion on this or even position on this. When I think of that, um, synthesizing this, I think of 
somebody who not only is trying to create the best version of what they think the truth is, but is cutting out what might be contradictions. And yep. so I have a, a struggle where I, I look at Matthew and I see Matthew 10, Matthew 15, Matthew 1, verse 21, which Dr. Goodacre answers. Like, yeah, it does sound very Jewish only. You know, mm-hmm. I came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Sounds exclusively ethnic focused, so sure. to speak. Uh, Luke is not okay with that. Luke says, nice try, buddy. I got a better version, all inclusive, yep. you know, come in. Um, what do you think the diatessaron's position was on this? you think they cut out those uh, exclusive Jewish only ideas? It's really hard to tell. Um, it's, uh, we do have, Theodore of Sir does say that um, there seems to have been some sort of effort, he says, uh, by Tatian to make Jesus less Jewish. Um, but part of the problem is Theodoret's caricature of Tatian um, is more informed by the controversies Theodoret is engaged with um, 200 years later than what Tatian was actually involved with much earlier. And some of the things he says, like he says that uh, Tatian never says, he says that Tatian cuts out any reference to Jesus being the son of David or being a descendant of David. And that's not true. We can just go, we can read Ephraim's commentary. Um, there's even other testimonia to that not being the case with Tatian. Um, probably Theodore de Sir found one instance where he, there was a citation that he liked that it was dropped out. And this is a very normal thing to do. You sort of make sweeping characters of texts you don't like. Um, so for the most part, we don't really know uh, what what Tatian did um, with respect to any specific passage. I mean, we could look up what evidence there is um, in Ephraim's commentary or the other s- scattered testimonia we have that we use to re- try to reconstruct Tatian's gospel. Um, one of the things we do know, very interestingly, is that Tatian added in that Mary, and not only Joseph, was a descendant of David. Um, so... Uh, this is, of course, maybe a problem if you are cons- reading the genealogies in both Matthew and Luke, and both of them go down to Joseph. But Jesus isn't Joseph's kid, right? And so we have people early on already sort of struggling with this. It makes perfect sense as a first century gospel that you were going to be interested in the legal genealogy of Jesus. That's what matters in antiquity for lots of people. Um, but if you are very invested in this uh, Joseph doesn't matter because of the virgin birth position, um, then maybe someone like Tatian writing a little bit later, who's very interested in the nature of the incarnation and things like that, maybe he thinks, what's the point of all this stuff leading to Joseph? Joseph doesn't matter. So he does two things. He cuts out the genealogies, both of them, and adds in that Mary was also a descendant of David. And so we've got the Davidic line running into Jesus. Um, and I think both of those maneuvers make sense as part of, part of a, the same strategy of seeing all this stuff about Joseph being irrelevant, not to mention contradictory. You're absolutely right. The, we've done a, a whole podcast, one of our first episode on Raymond Brown's um, Birth of the Messiah book. We explained how these genealogies between Matthew and Luke are irreconcilably um, contradictory. Um, but cuts out these, these genealogies and then makes Mary also a descendant of David, as she is not explicitly named in any of Tatian sources. That's mind-blowing for me. I mean, I bet there's many other examples like that that are in the diatessaron. Or... Yeah, it's, it's difficult because so little of it survives. Um, our best source, Ephraim's commentary, is infuriatingly... Uh, um, occasional. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't give us ever long running excerpts. Um, he picks just things he's interested in and, uh, moves on. And often there's short quotations or even allusions. And he likes, um, it's, it's very paraphrastic. Um, he will sometimes give us a lemma, like a a citation, but it's usually short and then goes on to paraphrase the rest of the contents of the text. Um, and he sometimes seems to skip over entire pericopes. Um, of course, it's hard to know because we don't have a base text to compare it to. Um, so maybe some of the pericopes were just omitted. I'm not sure how we would know. Either omitted or changed. Yes, right. 